We hit 100,000 subscribers. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart about hitting 100,000 subscribers. This video is a little late, but in commemoration of hitting 100K, I'm going to be showing you how to make $100,000 plus per year as a teacher on YouTube or just as a teacher. And I'm going to be showing you step by step what I've done. This is going to be the most comprehensive video about being a YouTube teacher there has ever been. Ben, it's going to be a little bit long too, but I'm going to show you how to be a teacher. I'm going to show you everything. Okay. I'm going to literally lay out my strategy and it is a formula. I want to tell you this. It is a formula. I, it's, I am a very formulaic oriented person. I'm going to show you how to choose your niche and the niche I began with wasn't the niche I stayed in. And I'm going to tell you about that. I'm going to show you how to research other you know, research other channels in your niche, figure out what the potential is, what you should be doing. I'm going to show you how to pick your topics that you actually talk about on YouTube as a teacher, because remember, it's not about you. It's about giving value to others. So you need to be able to pick your topics to give value to what others want. I'll show you how to do the shoot, the step-by-step -step of how you can get all these videos out. You see me releasing videos every single day. And there's some work that goes into that. And I'm going to go over, this is, you know, if you're a big YouTuber, you're even going to want to check out this section is the numbers. I'm going to go over what numbers you want to be hitting, when you should be expecting traction, how long it will take to get there, to get your first hundred or thousand or whatever subs. And I'm going to show you how to take everything you're doing and move onwards with it kind of how to look at what the videos people are liking and how to react to what people want at this, you know, at whatever times that you're doing the videos. So you can optimize, you can look at your numbers and draw conclusions from them about what to shoot next and what topics and what you should be doing to make everything better. Now, if you're excited for this, this is going to be fun. And I'm going to show you that teaching is actually one of the most beneficial to society professions and one of the best industries you can get in right now. Very unsaturated. Let's get to it. I'm going to lay this all out. Let's have some fun. Okay. So how do you make a hundred thousand dollars a year as a teacher? Now to let you know a little bit about me, I do a lot of videos on YouTube, but I don't make a hundred thousand dollars a year. I make over a million dollars a year. I'm not going to go into exact numbers. It's over a million dollars. Basically I am almost in the 0.1% okay, of income earners and that's personal income. That's not business income. That's personal because personal is what counts and you can make a lot of money being a teacher. I hear so many teachers complain about their wages or their salaries, but the reality is you actually get more back giving out content for free. And a lot of my business is based off of giving out free content on YouTube because if you offer value to the world, the value will always come back to you. So first let's dive into picking your niche. Now, when I started, I didn't know how to pick the perfect niche. I was just getting into YouTube. I really didn't have a clue and it's fine by the way. So you don't need to know your exact niche when you start, but these were the niches that I chose in the beginning and I'll tell you how they transformed. Now, the niches I picked or the topics I picked to talk about were digital nomad, quitting your job, affiliate marketing, and Google ads. My job before I quit in 2012 was doing Google ads. So I figured I could offer some extremely valuable content there. Being a digital nomad, I've traveled the world. Affiliate marketing is where I made my money and quitting my job was kind of a big decision that I figured I could speak authoritatively about. So what I did was I shot a number of videos on each of these topics. I shot about five videos on each topic and I kind of mixed them up in how I was releasing them. I'll go into how you should release videos, how often, how consistent, and how to do that in a little bit when we get to the numbers section. And I'll take you on my computer. But basically I did five of these, each of these topics, shot them all, and I drip fed them out and I kind of mixed them up looking at what hit the most, what got the most views. Now in doing research 
I wanted to see what niche am I gonna be in? What other YouTubers was I gonna hope to show up in their suggested videos? Because all the traffic is in suggested videos or most of the traffic is in suggested videos. Now, all I did was I actually just went to YouTube and I searched, you know, I searched for a kind of the words. I wanted to see if there were YouTubers that were actually getting views or getting traction in talking about the topics that I was talking about. Now, just to give you an idea, some rules of thumb is kind of the biggest YouTubers in my niche I found were about a million subs and you can check this out right here. So we have ODI Productions and he's talking about affiliate marketing and he has 172,000 views. Affiliate marketing. He has 207,000 subscribers. So I thought that was pretty cool. I looked up a lot of search terms and the guys that I show, saw showing up consistently, you know, here's Anchor, here's Roberto Blake, Ryan Hildreth, ODI Productions shows up a lot, Freedom Influencer and Jay Brown. And I started looking at how big their channels were. We see Anchor has 200,000. We see, we see Roberta Blake has 400,000. We see Ryan Hildreth has 94,000. Freedom Influencer with 350,000. Jay Brown with 370,000. And another big YouTuber that showed up often in my space was Kevin David, who had about half a million subscribers at the time. And of course, there was Ty Lopez, which had about a million subscribers when I started. So I did research and I looked at what topics they did that were trending, okay? I looked at if there was and, and their, people are viewing their videos on affiliate marketing, on Digital Nomad, et cetera. So I said, okay, my market is validated. And I, I set a goal for myself. I always set goals and I said, okay, I wanna have roughly between, where I should shoot for is roughly between a quarter of a million and a million subscribers. Like a million subscribers will be the, that'll be kind of like when I've maxed out my audience and talking about these topics. So I did research. So when you're first starting out on YouTube, the hardest thing is going from zero subscribers to a thousand. And in order to get that initial traffic, you have to actually, the trick, here's the big trick, and this is the big secret, and this changed everything for me, is you actually want to focus more on how-to videos. So you wanna do maybe around, I say 15, how-to videos of that 20 video shoot, right? You wanna do maybe about 15, maybe 10 to 15 videos that are how-to topics. Let me show you. Now, how-to videos are the essential type of teaching videos. You're showing people how to do something and people search for these terms. So here's Stephen James' channel called Project Life Mastery. And he did how to stop trading time for money, how to make money on YouTube with Dan Locke, how to budget your money how to make money on Amazon, how to overcome fear of starting your business, how to stay focused and achieve your goals. Now, how-to videos are very direct teaching videos. You know it's a teaching video if it's a how-to video. And this is the best way to go around, you know, kind of topics. You wanna do about 15 of these and then you wanna do about five clickbait videos. Let me show you how to pick these topics. So here I am on SEM Rush, and this is called the Keyword Magic Tool, and you can use it if you want. But what I did was I entered in uh, words such as affiliate marketing, and I wanted to search for words that people were searching for around affiliate marketing because I want to show up in the search. Because when you have zero subscribers, you need to do videos that have some search traffic for them. You wanna show up in that search when people are searching on Google or YouTube. And I looked here and I saw the videos that are getting, you know, the questions are stuff such as what is affiliate marketing, how to start affiliate marketing, etc. Now these are questions I could speak to authoritatively and answer and shoot videos about, but there's a little but. You would think that you'd wanna go for the most high volume keywords such as what is affiliate marketing and that's wrong. You actually want to go to the most specific question because when somebody is searching for the question what is affiliate marketing, what they're probably thinking but just don't consciously know how to type is probably they're looking for this question is how to make money with affiliate marketing for beginners. So I would do a topic like that and even though this only gets 210 searches, if you answer this question, it probably, it's you're still gonna talk about what affiliate marketing is if you do this video, but 
most people who are searching about affiliate marketing are probably thinking about, well, how do I do this as a beginner? So you want to speak to those people. You want to speak to a beginner, not somebody more advanced because that's what's going to ultimately get people watching your video. The next way I pick topics is to pick the clickbaity type topics. I would go to ODI Productions channel and I would click on this tab right here, videos. And I'm going to go over on the right side here and I'm going to click sort by and I'm going to click sort by most popular right there. You can see some of these videos are irrelevant. You know, I'm not going to do a video on Lil Wayne, believe me, instru instrumental. And you just kind of got to use common sense here. You know, if you can't use common sense, you probably shouldn't be running your own business. But I saw he did videos like this, how to make a WordPress website 2016 easy. So I thought to myself, okay, cool. That's a video I can do and I can do it for this year. I also see what is affiliate marketing and how does it work? How to make $1,000 per day with affiliate marketing. Now, this is an example of something that people aren't searching for, but it's something that people will click on and are interested in. Now, if you put up clickbaity type titles in your videos, if you don't have any subscribers, they may not get very much traction initially until you get a bigger subscriber count, but I still suggest you spice those in there. Now, over time, what you do or what I do as you get more subscribers is you kind of reverse things. Out of a 20 video shoot, you might do five how-to videos and then you might do 15 clickbaity titles because you know you're gonna get some traction on your videos and if YouTube sees that people enjoy the topic, they'll show them more in the suggested video column, which is where you really grow your channel big. Now for the actual shoot, you're gonna to wanna to schedule an entire day to shoot videos. And I'm gonna expose one of my little secrets here. Okay, come here. So my little secret is I actually film 20 videos a day. You know what, frankly, I don't have time to sh go every single day to set up cameras to be have my energy on, do my beautiful comb over right there. I don't have that time. So I schedule 20 videos in a day. And what you do is you then release those videos over time. This isn't my business. This is just kind of like, you know, my, my main business is I buy ads, you know, and I, I, I market products. So that's my main business. So you want to kind of batch shooting. So I say 20 vids a day is kind of a good place to sit. Now, another thing I've kind of come to see over time is I like using props. You know, I have little props that relate to what I do. For, for me, you know, I'm using a whiteboard, I'm using a computer, and you know, I kind of mix it up. I have my money, my money gun, you know, and I always keep my books around because my books are just, frankly, they're always around. But I, I really do want people to know I'm a reader and I'm a person and I am a real, you know, this is what I do and this is how I live. In order to get, you know, stacks of money, you know, like not everybody has as much money as me, but I bring all this money out here because frankly, I'm teaching others how to make money. So it needs to, people need to understand I have money myself. I'm not just here teaching people how to make money yet I'm actually secretly broke. I have a lot of money, <laughs> you know, I'm doing, I'm doing well and I need that to be conveyed and I figure that would be an advantage in this particular niche, in the make money niche. It would be proof that, you know, like, look, it's right out there. Despite what you see in my ads, I don't actually spend my money on exotic cars. I rent those cars. I rent helicopters. I don't own my own helicopter yet. I am a helicopter pilot, you know, just kind of, I do it for fun, but I put all my money in my savings account. You know, I put all my money, you know, I'm, I'm saving up for retirement because that's the smart thing to do. But however often you can shoot, you want to drip feed those videos out at the same time every single day, okay? So for me, I release my videos at 8.30 every day, 8.30 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. And if you've been a subscriber to my channel, you know my consistency is unbelievable. And I actually got that from Casey Neistat. Big shout out, 
because he was a YouTuber who really influenced me. And, and let me know what YouTuber influenced you the most to, if you're an aspiring, you know, person wanting to start a YouTube channel, let me know which YouTuber inspired you the most. Maybe for some of you, it's me. For me, it was Casey Neistat, you know, and for others, it might be, you know, people like Stefan James or Ty Lopez. But let me know in the comments which YouTuber inspired you to say, ooh, this is something I might actually want to do. Now, if you can't afford time-wise or money-wise to do videos, to do a full day of shooting videos every single month and release 20 videos every single month, then do whatever schedule works best with you. But the most important thing is consistency. If you can only get to, you know, uh, if you can only do a video shoot every three months, then release a video, you know, once a week, two a week. But be consistent. I can't stress this enough. The consistency is the most overwhelming factor that you can possibly do. Same time, every day, and you have to keep this up for a long period of time. I'm talking you have to commit to this for six months until you can actually rule out if you're meant for YouTube. Now, here are some really valuable numbers, and you may want to screenshot this. You may want to put this as your wallpaper. You may want to put this as a little post-it note on your computer or whatever, but this is going to be some really important numbers, and I'm actually going to take you down on my computer and show you some of the metrics within my own YouTube account so you can see how this works in action. So first off, I'm going to go over some numbers. These are ratios to keep in mind to kind of analyze your videos around. Now, one important thing, is likes versus dislikes. So generally speaking, you want to have 20 likes for every dislike you have. If you have way more dislikes than this, then that's not good. But generally speaking, if you're doing good videos, if you're telling the truth, if you're helping people, you should get about 95%, you know, people liking your video and 1% of people disliking your video. Next thing is comments. So generally speaking, you want, you know, one comment for every thousand views, okay? If you aren't getting a comment for every thousand views, then you're probably doing something wrong, okay? So the next one is views per video. So once you start getting subscribers, and really the key thing is here, you're answering questions, right? You're answering questions, you're getting that search traffic from Google and YouTube, and that is slowly starting to, over time, that will start growing and you'll start getting subscribers. And once you start getting subscribers, you'll only actually expect about five to 10% after a week, okay? So for me, you know, I have a uh, 100,000, you know, some subscribers. So I only expect my videos to do maybe five to 10,000 views, okay? Why? I don't know. Sometimes those videos boost up months later. I don't fully understand the algorithm, but this is, this is what I do know. Now, the most important metric as a teacher you want to watch out for is average watch time. Now, average watch time is the most important metric you can look at. Now, here's the reality. If your average watch time is a minute or two minute as a teacher, it means you're probably not doing your job right. You're either not interesting enough or you're not teaching valuable enough content or that there's a disconnect between your headline and the content you're actually delivering. But for whatever reason it is, you need your average watch time about four minutes or above. If it's not above four minutes as a teacher, then you're doing something wrong and you need to focus on improving that. Now, ways to improve average watch time can be a myriad of things. One is you could be more interesting. Two is you could use, you know, you could, you could change the tonality of your voice. Another one is you could actually jump in between different settings. So I teach a little bit on here. I teach a little bit on here and I'm going to actually take you into my stats in just a second. Now, what I just did is I future paced you. I laid out what I'm going to show you in the future because we're going to get into that in a second, but that keeps your average watch time going. Another thing you want to do is editing. You know, I don't do too much editing in my videos, but if you look at other channels, they rely a lot on having funny edits or funny things going on, etc. To be a teacher, you've got to be entertaining. We all remember university or college and how just mind-numbingly boring those professors are. It's really sad, but the future of education has got to be entertaining. That was actually a quote 
from Elon Musk. Elon Musk said, education should be like a Batman movie. There should be special effects, there should be ups, there should be downs, there should be character development, etc. And last but not least is there's a spike time. And this is what I'm gonna show you on my computer is generally speaking, you'll see your views go up. If you are doing everything consistently, if you are consistently posting videos every six to 10 weeks, okay, and let me just put that on there, the YouTube gods, and this is what I've seen, the YouTube gods will favor you with more traffic and they will kind of notch you up into a different demographic in the suggested videos column and you will be exposed to a new group of people. And if you're doing everything right for another six to eight weeks, they will expose you to more people and so on and such forth. But that's three months, you know? So this takes time. And that's why you have to do this. You have to commit for six months of consistently posted videos if you wanna make this good. Now let's get onwards. Let's look at the stats right here and have some fun. Okay, so when you set up a YouTube channel, you'll get access to what's called the Creator Studio right here. I still use the classic version, but that's gonna be deprecated soon. But this is the thing I look at. I started posting videos regularly out in August. I had some videos on my channel, but what you'll see is kind of uncanny. So you'll see right here is when I started posting videos. Every roughly six to eight weeks, we look, we see our first spike over here. Okay, about six weeks later, and they will expose you to a new audience if your videos do well in a broader audience, if you're entertaining enough, if you're delivering valuable content, etc., then that you will set a new baseline. See that? So I started posting videos and I set a new baseline. It went up a little bit, okay? If you look at this, another six to eight weeks later, a spike and a new baseline right there. And if you look again, another spike, and then sort of a new baseline. And right here again, you'll see the YouTube gods, another spike, and we have another new baseline. But the point is you have to stay consistent. If you don't stay consistent, you won't see these. These will determine whether you set a new baseline for your audience. So how I optimize my topics over time is what I do is not too difficult. I actually look at my, this section, real-time activity. Sorry, this interface is a little new for me. And I'll click this, see more. And what I'm interested in is what videos are people most interested in my channel? And these are the top videos that people are interested. Make $100 per day with Facebook with this one trick. Make $100 per day with Google with this one trick. How to make $30 an hour using apps on your phone. These are my top trending topics right now. Therefore, the videos that I'm gonna do next, if I know anything about how to make $100 a day on another, using another traffic source, I'm gonna do a video on that. That's exactly what I'll be doing. I'm gonna show people other free traffic sources. And that's what I realized very quickly. People don't want to learn advertising on YouTube. They want to learn that within a course. It just, YouTube is not the preferred place for people to learn how to pay money. Most people on YouTube want to learn how to do affiliate marketing for free. So therefore, that's what you want to give people. If people want to learn free traffic methods, then you give them free traffic methods. And that's what I focus on on my channel now. Woo, okay, so that is becoming a YouTube teacher in a nutshell. And it's a lot of stuff, it's a lot of work. It's a six month minimum commitment, but it will pay off. And if you are committed to doing this, there are teachers that have millions of subs in weird niches, you know? There's this person, Sean Woods, who teaches people how to make animal traps, wild animal traps, how to catch mice, how to catch skunks, how to catch raccoons, how to catch anything. And he has 1.3 million subscribers, a full business of apparel and everything. So you can do anything you want, but make sure, you know, hopefully this helps you a little bit in your journey. And if this helps you out, let me know. Just let, you know, I really wanna know if this helps you out, type in, this helps me out, and let me know what was the most impactful thing that you learned in this video because it took me so long 
to learn what I just told you today. It was such a struggle, so many hours spent, and you're having it served up for you for free on a silver platter. Please just do me the service of letting me know how this helps you, what specifically helped you. And if this is your first time on my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, slam that notification bell, pop, 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 and like this video. And if you wanna learn more about how I actually monetize as a teacher, because I didn't go into the money yet, right? I didn't go into the money. But basically, I monetize everything through affiliate marketing. And I talk about that business model in my money club. You can click join in next to the subscribe button and affiliate marketing is my main thing. So hopefully that gives you a big overview of things. And as always people, there are options available. You do not need to go to college. You do not need to work a job. You do not need to live like a slave in today's day and age. And all I go over on this channel is ways that you can earn money for yourself. So quit college, quit your job, take control of your life, and remember, use social media as a tool to get to your goals. Don't let social media use you. Use social media to learn. Use social media to make money. Don't let it control you because for the majority of people, those notifications, those blinks, those bloops, everything is there to get you back. So the first step you can take is turn off all those notifications of things that are unuseful for you and let you determine when you go to the social media and take your life to the next level. Live free, take back control. Talk to you soon.